Hi guys, second video to here on wheel and axles. So the first one we talked about how you could figure out how far things spin, which is going to be important because with the wheel and axle, we're going to spin two things at the same time, two circular objects. One is going to be the wheel and the other is going to be the axle. And the difference between the two, the wheel is the bigger of the two, right? So the wheel in this case would be the thing that's green, that's turning it green because it has a diameter of eight inches. And over here, the axle, the axle is the smaller thing because it has a diameter of four. Now I know there's an axle in between them, okay? And so uh, we've got a, a little bit different situation here, but let's say that I'm spinning, I'm applying force to the green wheel and effort is going to be, uh, the load is going to be on this wheel back in the back, okay? So the smaller wheel, so we call that the axle, all right? Um, so let's talk about mechanical advantage. How do we figure out the mechanical advantage of this system? Well, it depends. It depends on where you're applying the effort because see, I could grab with my hands on the green wheel here and spin it and, and as a result, turn the orange or I could put my hands on the orange and spin it and as a result, spin the green, right? So where's the effort and where's the resistance? Um, mechanical advantage though, and the nice thing is, is the formula has not changed from the, from the lever stuff that we did earlier. The mechanical advantage, if we're gonna talk ideally, hypothetically, okay, in a perfect scenario, the mechanical advantage would be used by comparing distances, right? And so we would say, well, um, that's the distance we talked about of the effort arm over the distance to the resistance arm. And with levers, we talked about the distance from the fulcrum to wherever I'm pushing, okay? In this case, we're gonna talk about if I spun the wheel one time here, and one time here, we're gonna compare those. So really we're talking the circumference, right? Well, we have a formula for circumference. It's two pi times the radius of the effort arm or the effort wheel or axle. And then the circumference for the little one is gonna be two times pi times the resistance, oh, sorry the radius of the little guy, right? And look what happens in our formula. See, circumference of the effort, circumference of the resistance, right? And our formula, it doesn't matter which one we talk about, the twos go away and the pi's go away, so our distances are really like radiuses. Or we can also do pi times the diameter of the effort arm over pi times the diameter of the resistance arm and the pi's go away, so I'm comparing diameters. And either way, look, I'm just comparing the dimensions. If I have the diameter here and the diameter here, I can make a comparison. If it was radius and radius, I could still make the same comparison. I'm just going to divide them, okay? So it turns out to be simply this. Let's say that we apply force on the diameter of the big wheel. So let's just say, for instance, that I take my hands and I apply it here and I apply a force here, okay? So my effort force is here. If that's the case, that means that the load is here. So I'm spinning, let's see, that would be uh, counterclockwise. That means the load is going to be clockwise. It's going to oppose it, right? And so we'll say that this is the resistance force and it's going the opposite direction, okay? And if I want to figure out the mechanical advantage of this system, it's pretty simple then. Mechanical advantage is my effort force is applied here. It's eight. And the resistance force has a diameter of four the mechanical advantage of that system is two. In other words, where I'm applying my force is twice as big as where the force, the resistance is located, right? So, I mean, it's literally that easy. If I would have applied my, now listen, if I would have grabbed here and turned here, and as a result, this would have spun, then would have been a four to eight ratio, it would have been one half, right? That's the adjustment in the formula for wherever I grab. And that's pretty nice because that means I got my ideal mechanical advantage. Uh, I'll just go ahead and put an I here, okay, comparing distances. Now, let's say that we go ahead and uh, let's add some forces in to take this problem a step further. Let me grab a different color here. Okay, what if I had the same situation here? Okay, so let's redraw it. Here's the wheel. There's the axle. And let's connect the two. Okay, there's the thing connecting them. Okay, so now let's say then, this time instead of giving distances here, uh, it's the same wheel and axle, so eight and four, right? But let's say this time that I go ahead and I spin and I apply uh, 40 pounds of force here. So my effort, my force, of my effort is 40 pounds. And let's say that um, because of that, I'm able to resist, say, uh, a 15 pound resistance force. Well, my pencil just broke, so let's try that again, okay? 15 pound is the resistance force, okay? Well, I was expecting, notice, I was expecting a mechanical advantage of two. Do I have that mechanical advantage of two? Let's take a look, okay? 
when I talk about AMA, the actual mechanical advantage that I got out of this system, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare then the force that I got out. Oh, wow, I made that. Hold on. Let's put a big, pick a better value here. Let's say 75 pounds of force, okay? Now, when I compare these two, okay, it's going to be then the force that I got out over the force that I had to put in, resistance over effort. In this case, it's 75 over 40. Now that does reduce 75 over 40. Sorry, 75 over 40 is, uh, that's going to reduce to, of course, I'm getting a call on my phone, so I can't use it. Hold on just a second. 75 divided by 40 is 1.875. So I did not get the full two unit two two uh, mechanical advantage that I thought, right? But that just means that I must have lost some of the uh, mechanical advantage to friction, and that's okay because the last thing I'm asking you to do in all these homework problems is to figure out the efficiency. And when I ask you to figure out the efficiency, we take AMA over IMA, okay? So I have a 1.875 on top, and I have a two on bottom. If I take 1.875 and divide it by two, I get 0.9375. That is. 93.75% efficient. And that's a pretty typical problem for the wheel and axle. Hopefully that makes sense. That's enough to get you going on the homework. Uh, email me if you have any questions and actually ask your neighbor first. See if you guys can't work through it together.